Hello everyone, I'm Chesterk44, also known as Fly, and welcome to this Let's Play of Tunic. Now we are just about ready to go and take care of another boss, I believe, but I have quite a bit to talk about with you today before we begin. <laughs> oh yes indeed. You see, it has been a week since the last stream, and as I said at the end of the last one, I was going to work on getting more translating done. And do I have a story for you? So, I've been doing the translating the same way I've been doing. I figured out that... I figured out before that each one of the characters was basically... a syllable. A, sa a syllable or sound, something like that. You, ki, gar, how, pu, re, etc, etc. Kind of like Japanese in a way. Well, I kept looking into it and kept translating it. I had to go in there, trans figure out a figure out for more certain a bunch of uh, symbols, a bunch of characters, and then I went through the entire booklet and this uh, list of things from other things I found that I had to write down in order to translate them. I got all the characters out, put in words where I figured out words, and then used that information to find a bunch more syllables, and then a bunch more, and then a bunch more. And I kept going. I did notice a few patterns as I went through, most notably that a lot of sounds did tend to end with R. So there were a couple like... Oh, examples. Tar, or far, or here. You get the idea. Some of them had the more R sound at the end, which was interesting. And then at another point, I made another discovery that there were several syllables that had a little dot on the bottom there, and I noticed a pattern that if it had the dot at the bottom, it was exactly the same as another symbol, except the sound was reversed. So, for example, C would become ease. There's an example. Still, I kept going through it and translating as much as I could, as many characters as I could. And then, just the other day, as I was thinking over things in the last bunch that I had set up, I had noticed a bit of a pattern. I, I had done... The last bunch that I'd done had basically a bunch of the syllables that started with L. So you had... So I had... Let's see. Lo, so I had stuff like... Lo, le, li, and other ones like that beforehand. Lu, and so forth. And I also had a bunch of others that were... All, and I noticed a similarity between all of them, as well as a few others, like Pa and Fa. And, I, and as I was in the shower, because everyone has their best thoughts in the shower, why not? I kind of had an idea. I thought maybe I had noticed the pattern. And thinking about it, it seemed to make a bit more sense. So I put it all together and put everything together in order to try and figure out the key. And I got it. I now have the exact key for how the language is put together. How every character is put together. And with that, I can now translate almost everything. That key... That specific key is that. Each character has six lines on top and six lines on bottom. So, twelve lines, basically. The six lines in the center represent the consonant sound, and the six lines in the outside represent the vowel sound. You can see that in a few, in a few cases. For example, on here, uh, if you look all the way on the right side, third line down, the last letter on the right, the one that's just like an upwards arrow on the inside, that's mm. It's just mm. And if you look up in the upper right, with the, uh, with the upwards facing arrow above the line, that's on the outside. That's uh. If you put those two together, you have ma.
and that's the key. That's how it works. You have the inner syllables, you have the outer vowels, and through that, I have spent all of yesterday translating everything. There's only like one or two vowel sounds that I still haven't quite gotten, that I still need to figure out, but they're very rare. I've only found like two characters that have that instance, and they don't help at all. So, with that said, I'm going to do something right now. I have the list right here, but I've already gone through and translated everything in the book. So far. There's still more in the book that I will need to find. I need to find more pages, but I've translated enough that I can tell you what these things say. And there are some very interesting things here. I've tried. I'm gonna go through all of this. This episode is gonna be a lot of going through this in order to basically read what this all says and explaining what I can theorize and make guesses about from what I've seen. The uh, the music's probably gonna be yeah the music's gonna be muted a bit because I have it all written in a word document here and I only have one screen so unfortunately <laughs> that's kind of how it's going to be. So. Table of Contents doesn't really have much. There are three words that are that need to be translated. One talks about cards, one talks about praying, and one talks about something that I've seen referenced a few times, which is that mysterious ghostly realm that I thought was like the afterlife or something like that. Now I know it's called the Far Shore. I've seen it referenced several times. So now we know. The far shore, that's that spiritual realm. Oh. Next page. The lore drop. Ain't that an important thing to read. So what have we got that it says here? <clears throat> a long, long time ago, there lived a civilization of great power. They built a city, and within that city, they built a palace. They held sacred the secrets of the Holy Cross and understood the planar nature of reality. They ventured to the far shore and sought power from the spaces between. As is usual, an alluring old power was discovered. Fossils of self, annealed visions of the future, entombed and cast into sarcophagi and buried. A lever in the canonical plane, a store of potential. Perhaps it is the fabled prize, the power to defy death. Obviously, there's going to be more we need to learn about this, but unfortunately, we're missing page 4 and 5 and learning more from that. Still, it's telling us a little bit. So, there was an ancient civilization, obviously in ruins now, and they had some... and they figured out some great power. I'm guessing those pillars that we've been finding, because I see it referenced here, are those sarcophagi that they mentioned, which holds this... What is it? Fossils of self? Whatever the hell that is. I'm not sure what it is exactly. I can't quite figure that out yet, but I'm very curious. The next one, it feels like we have some sort of image of how their planes work. On the left, you have the canonical plane, which I'm guessing is supposed to be their home plane, where they come from and all that. On the right, we have the Far Shore, which, okay, I, that's obviously the spiritual world. In the center, we have something new, a new reference that I haven't seen, which is, what is it? Ah, yes, the Shadow Oubliette. Still not sure what that is, but it's something new. Hello, new person who has just arrived in stream. What is going on? The answer is, I have figured out how to read all the information in this here, in this, in this book that's included here, and I'm just excitedly going over it so I can get into some lore explanations and stuff like that. Just to explain. Anyway. So, that's what we have on this page. Next page, I think this is supposed to be, like, the end of 
the what's going on in a way, like the end of the tale. So we have both the beginning and the end, and what we have information based on that. This one says as following. Again the same battle fought uncountable times. And so the cycle continues. Ruin seekers drawn to the beacon are tested. Those who abandon their quest are forgiven and simply disappear. Those who are strong enough to remember their true hero selves will, through violence, begin the cycle anew. Will you be the heir to the air and wait within the shadow oubliette? Before long a ruin seeker will be drawn to you. Their gifts will recall your last life, and you will grant them the same false hope you were given. To break the curse, a ruin seeker must by some miracle invoke a relic from beyond this plane. Okay, so we have more information here. Ruin Seekers. We don't have an exact name for the little fox we're playing as, but he, is, but he, I believe it's a he, is a Ruin Seeker. That's what we are. We're drawn to some beacon, which means we've been pull, we've been drawn to this particular area in order to... I don't know why. And then... It's apparently part of some cycle. I'm guessing it's something like we're drawn in, we're pulled in, we go through this massive test, and if we succeed, we end up entrapped here. Taking the place of, I'm guessing, this this uh, spiritual fox woman was the last hero who came here, and she was trapped here. She called for us, we're coming, we're going to set her free and be trapped in, a, in her place, and then the cycle will continue again and again. So something happened between them discovering this old power, this great power, and us coming out here t and doing this cycle with some person or being trapped here. I do have one other clue for that, and that's in one of the things I read. One of the things I wrote down. And that's... here it is. That... that plaque that was located within the temple. Which says, With three keys we sealed the air. A key is no more... something. I'm missing that character. Seekers of Ruin leave here. Which means... Whatever this air is, I don't know what power they have, or what they found, but they, but this past civilization sealed it away, and it's able to be kept sealed. There's still more I need to figure out, but I don't know it yet. The next information is, well, beginning your adventure. What do we know here? Pretty simple. A secret legend says that a great treasure lies in this faraway land. Maybe it is the power to defy death. Why do you seek this power, tiny one? Time to begin your adventure! Here is what you do. And then after that, it gives you a few tips to how to, to how to begin and go through things. Fairly simple stuff. And then after that, we get into, well, information on how to play the game. We're ha we have confirmation that we're a ruin seeker, for example. And it mentions basically most of the other kinds of stuff that's, uh, that's already known. The information on space, the only thing that was really of note, sure, we know how to run, how to roll, how to talk, and stuff like that. But the thing in the bottom left is, says, Forbidden Technique. Offer reverence to the tombs of those who came before. Specifically, praying. When I originally found this word, I thought it was going to say something like forgotten technique. Like, nobody knew how to pray, but suddenly you do. But no, it's forbidden. The fact that praying is forbidden? That I find very curious. Why would they forbid praying to things like this? This is basically about locking and information like that. And then we have stamina points, which... Most of the information we know about already, but... Okay, there's another one of the words that I don't know. Uh, it, it, yeah, it basically tells us about everything. You can evade and are immune briefly. You flinch if you hit, and I guess you're interrupted, and yada yada yada. Not very information. The next page is about vigor. 
that's what our stamina is called. Even though we have stamina, it's called vigor. And it's basically telling us, yeah, you can roll when you use it up, and then if you're tired, all you can do is hop and get knocked away and stuff like that. And then we have all the various items and the like. Oh god, there was so much to read here. Most of it is flavor text and the like. The ice palms were... Apparently made from a fairy of the West Garden. I haven't seen any fairy, but that's interesting. The explosion bomb was made from Swarm. The fire bomb, I just love the description. The fire bomb is just fire, fire everywhere, and ow, 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 ow. <laughs> I love that. Uh, the, informa the other information, fairly basic. Let's see. Uh, effigy, betray for coins. Each time you use it, you get more. Lure... This distracts foes. The golden coin. It says, a special treasure that allows a wish. Use it well to give to wish eater. And, it's, and it points to the cards, which are listed as cards or ways to be inspired to unusual greatness. We'll get back to that. We have magic items. The interesting thing is that it says, some items use the power of your soul. Magic points refill when you rest, but there is a finite number of souls in the world. The fact there's a finite number of souls, that, that makes me wonder how that's uh, concerning. It also says that the Holy Cross is more than a mere item, as a note. Which I wonder about. We haven't seen this Holy Cross yet. But I wonder. Magic Potion just tells us it heals us. Shards, find a bunch, and you get another flask. And that image of powder says, Offer up ash, so that's what it is, to make your magic potions more potent. It is said the ash of heroes fortifies the blood. So that tells us a bit more. Well, not really. It's probably more just flavor text. This page is a very interesting one. It says, if you seek to increase your power, risk an offering to the air. Okay, we kind of got that. We give these offerings to the shrine, and we saw that they rest in front of the air. But it says to risk it. The little gray block gives some more information. As the shore bleeds one of falsehoods and memories, the air, <coughs> the air hungers for reminders of the corporeal world. Offer these mementos and share a delusion of power. And then at the bottom, warning, pilgrims to the shore are stripped of this false power. Which implies that we're not actually getting powerful, interestingly enough. I don't know, I imagine this might mean that later on in the game, when we free the air and end up trapped, the air will get all our power and will be incredibly weak, or somehow we'll need to find a way to defeat them when we don't have any of our benefits or buffs. So that will be curious. Next page is basically about healing. Bad news, the Ruin Seekers run out of hit points, but wait, a strange being has given us another chance. Such a debt is a dangerous thing to have. And on the right side, what was but is now not, and the ghostly form is an echo of self. Okay, I figured that much out. Touch it to break its connection to the cycle and let it drift back into the shore. Be kind, as this is your fate as well. Okay, interesting flavor text. Future cycles, look back with faith, knowing the course, persevere, and be sure to boost your power despite the cost. Okay, it's trying to tell us we can strengthen up. And now we get to the cards. So I figured out some of these things. The ones on the left are a few examples of cards. The Cyan Peril Ring, which we actually found, raises the defense when you are in peril. So I guess the purpose of that card is... As we, lose, as we lose health, we take less damage. Okay, that seems useful. I feel like, or I imagine, that that card that had the attack symbol on it, I thought it just boosted our attack. It's possible it only boosts our attack when we're at low health. So I might want to switch that out. The Inverted Ash. Potions restore magic instead of, hit, instead of health. Never going to use that. 
Lucky Cup, I think we found that one, which basically if we kill a bu if we kill a monster, we get some health from them. A 15% chance. And the Muffling Bell means we can basically move around without enemies noticing us. Uh... On the right, cards can grant powerful inspiration, change them often depending on the challenge you face. So inspiration is basically what we're getting from it, and then it gives a bit of information. And then at the bottom, uh, wells and coins. Granting wishes requires payment, and further inspiration requires wishes. Makes sense. Those who wish enough can be formidable indeed, but to whom are you giving payment? I do wonder if that's going to connect to things later. After that, we have hints and clues, which most of it we figured out. I entered, but the I entered the temple, but it was empty. What now? Here is where Rune Seeker would place their keys. Where are the keys? You can't find any without prayer. How do I get to the atoll? Traverse the far shore. What is the secret of the golden path? Look to the stars. Okay, that I haven't gone to yet. And then we've got the checkpoint. It must see to the core, and the old burying ground is too hard. It is a place of despair. Only ghosts may enter need to remember that, because I think we're going to need to be dead for it. Alright. Then after that, we've got half a page. I haven't translated this yet, because I want to have both pages, so I can translate it all at the same time. No words on that one. And a bunch of survival tips. Pretty simple stuff. Uh, let's see. Your will to go on. It's flashing around breath. Power of your soul. Some folks leave their souls. You can run. Uh, try new cards, hoard, don't hoard valuable items, uh, roll and sword to, at the same time to perform a st fast stab, I'll have to try that, and someone has made maps for you, yada yada yada. Okay, then we have the gardens, <laughs> the west gardens. To the west of the great palace are the gardens. Many paths are broken, but there is a way, and the magic dagger is a magic item made from a fairy, use it to freeze those with foes with ice. Figured out that much. So I'm guessing this sealed temple is actually supposed to be this palace. And we don't really have any more information beyond that. It basically just tells us how to ring the west bell. Under the well, flooded like uh, nothing really noted except walking in water will slow you. We figured that out. Uh, beneath the surface is scary cave are scary places. Don't need to worry about that. And then we got lore on this thing. One key to the Shadow Oubliette is guarded by the last great machine of war. When the siege was done, this beast was coaxed into this lonely purpose. So that's what these keys we're getting are going to unlock. Uh, Questagons, I believe they're actually called. At least that's what one of the things I translated was. Odd name, but sure. So it was a siege engine. It said that. But the fact we're trying to get to open the Shadow Oubliette is what's concerning, considering what we're trying to figure out. Next information. We got the siege engine at the top. The information at the bottom basically says, Those who live in the fortress do not know the secrets of prayer. Use your knowledge wisely, and who knows what you will find. And it says the platform goes to the far shore, and the shrine to the hero's grave. And then we have lore on the ruined atoll. Under the library is the skeleton of a great abbey that survived as its annex. Once, some others made this their home and built on the ruins. Only flora and fauna live here now, but the frogs may be on patrol. And summoning the library path means venerating to the four corners, so take a knee. Okay, so we've got that. We've figured out that much. Even though it is really a massive set of ruins. Even though this was an abbey, everything's destroyed. I do wish I knew what it looked like when everything was fine. Uh, next we have the frog's domain, which... This one I don't get. It says, Ro Magic Orb Odd Door. Rotate it around the forbidden axis and partially summon a disquiet being. I don't know what that means. Unless it's talking about... Unless it's trying to give me information on this is how you do the whole whipping thing. 
Which, sure, why not? Ah, and now the next one. This, this we're going to be about to fight, the Librarian. Many have sought the secrets of this world, drawn by the great power and other secret legends. The Librarian has learned much, including powerful sorceries. He makes his home high above the clouds, waiting for foolish ruin seekers to bring him more pages. Although powerful, his tragedy is his belief that the Holy Cross resides in the cathedral. He will never visit the far shore. So, the librarian is indeed going to be a difficult fight. He is magical. This will not be easy. And he's apparently looking for the Holy Cross, but doesn't know where he is. And the fact he's waiting for us to bring pages... I wonder if we're going to find more pages of the book in here. And then finally we have the last page we have, Boss of the Scavengers. We'll stop at nothing to obtain the blue sigil. She has long known that it lies in the rooted ziggurat, but has only now entered its depths. It costs many lives, but any price would be acceptable. And that's all the information I have on the booklet here. Which means... We've found out a lot. We've I've learned quite a bit of information. This past civilization discovered something. They had this great power, but something about it was too much. So, I'm guessing some being se was sealed away in order to get that power away. And that being has constantly tricked others to come to them to get the power so that he can be so that they can be freed and someone else trapped in their place. But the power was sealed away with that being, so it stays sa sealed away. So it's a constant cycle of people coming in, getting tricked, being stuck with the power in sealed away, and this other person escaping into freedom. So I wonder what is more information here. I wonder if we're going to find more of these pages of this booklet up, si up in the library. So, that said, this episode hasn't really been much doing, but it's been a lot of learning. As I'm gonna end it here, it's way too long late in the episode for me to start up again. And, yeah, we're pretty good. I've only got a couple more things I can upgrade still and I will eventually uh oh yes I also want to change this out I have no idea what these do okay as far as I can tell so this one will let us sneak and move around faster these two give us bonuses when we're low this wine glass I don't know this will basically give us health. These two, I think, will have something to do with uh, Spirit of Self, boosting it at some point. So I'm going to take the one that gives us health when someone dies, and the other one that lets us uh, get more defense when low on health, because that'll be useful. And that's where I'm going to end this. Next episode, we'll head up into the library and see if we can deal with the librarian, or what we can find up there. That'll be in the next episode. So, until then, I am Chester44, also known as Fly. That is the Ruin Seeker. This has been a Let's Play of Tunic. And not just Tunic, but if you remember the, int the entry screen, it also has words. Tunic Secret Legend. And I shall see you all next time.